helicopters, two of the Air Life helicopters uh, that are actually on the scene. It looks like another one might be a police helicopter that was there as well. Uh, the initial reports were that that uh, suspect was in custody. We now have been told that that suspect is dead. Uh, the initial reports that there, there were two students that were shot and at least 13 to 15 uh, that were shot and killed, at least 13 to 15 students that were injured. And again, that has been updated just recently by the governor, Greg Abbott, saying 14 students and a teacher were killed inside Robb Elementary this afternoon. And again, this is video from earlier showing law enforcement responding during the chaos there. You can see that officer running toward the scene, off, or vehicles fe speeding towards the scene. And, and, you know, as all of this unfolds, there is just so much confusion, so much, confusion, so much chaos. And really to see uh, something that, that caught my attention, the response on social media from the school district itself, from the school itself, uh, doing their best to keep people informed, to say, do not come to the school, do not come here in a rush to try to pick up your children. Here is what we are trying to do to get everyone to a safe space. These are some, um, some pieces of information that we're gonna go through just to, to give you an idea of how it all started. The call came in just before noon. Again, we know that 14 students have been killed, one teacher as well. Here in San Antonio at University Hospital, a 10-year-old girl, a 66-year-old woman in critical condition. The suspected shooter, an 18-year-old named Salvador Romas, has been shot and killed by law enforcement. And this is someone who went to Uvalde High School, someone who is from that community. And I'll sure be interested to find out if this is somebody who grew up there, someone very familiar uh, with not only the community, but also Rob Elementary School. And um, to figure out, you know, how did he get into the school? Where did yeah. he go when he went into the school? I know there were some initial reports about being in a classroom, um, but all of that is still yet to be confirmed. And we're hoping that that is what we learn when this press conference happens here at five o'clock. Yeah, and like I said, most of the details that we have right now are from a, a press conference that Governor Greg Abbott had mm -hmm. uh, just moments ago. And I don't know, do we still have that piece of video? Uh, Landon is our producer. If we can, if we can play uh, that soundbite from the governor again, where he kind of details what he knows and what he learned, if we can get that queued up. Uh, okay, we actually have a new soundbite from the governor talking about some of the families uh, in Uvalde. Let's listen to that right now. When parents drop their kids off at school, they have every expectation to, be, to know that they're going to be able to pick their child up when that school day ends. And there are families who are in mourning right now, and the state of Texas is in mourning with them for the reality that these parents are not going to be able to pick up their children. That's certainly a sentiment that's being felt by a lot of us today, the, the parents who are just not being able to pick up their kids from school today because of the horrific actions of an 18-year-old, apparently Salvador Romas. We're learning more uh, about him, uh, yes. more details that we are just given. 18-year-old Salvador Romas believed to have shot his grandmother before going to that elementary school. He was a student at Uvalde High School. He, is, he was a U.S. citizen. And there were some questions about that because of the involvement of Border Patrol in this situation. Uh, certainly some initial reports that perhaps there was an issue with the suspect and Border Patrol. But again, as we've mentioned, Border Patrol is part of the community in Uvalde. They, they are law enforcement. They were there to respond. Uh, so any other any questions that may need to be answered as far as that goes, that's still yet to come. But this is a person who was from that community who uh, you know obviously this is so much the fire alarm side of it and assisting atf possibly some will be dealing um, with the social media side so everybody has a role they'll know their role and they'll you know fit in there and all work together uh, kathy the social media side this is clearly a part of these uh, shootings that we've seen um, increasingly as a part of our culture, the attempt by um, those perpetrating them to get attention. Um, how does the FBI think about that as a, uh, as a part of these kinds of incidents? 
Well, there's um, several different types of cyber squads within the FBI, and so you have more of the forensic nature that works on the background side, the back side of it, and then you have those who deal more with um, the, the information processing. So they're going to look at all aspects of it to see how often he posted, what platforms he posted on. Um, and, you know, as we know, like this generation, the 18-year-old, that's their kind of their life. That's how they communicate for a lot of the time is putting stuff on um, social media and out in public source. So all of that is going to be reviewed to kind of see what was his pattern, what was his history, and how did it lead up to this day and time. Uh, and Catherine, we can imagine also, we've been talking about the federal response. Um, we can imagine that this will be something with, that uh, the president, he's overseas. Um, but... Um, uh, after having gone to, to Buffalo, uh, President Biden, this has now become a part of the role of the modern presidency to speak to these kinds of uh, moments that tear open a community and infect the whole nation. And as we discussed earlier, um, there is that bigger context picture. Just this week, we had this FBI active shooter report that found that between 2020 and 2021, we saw an increase of over 50%. And if you go back to 2017, so this pre-pandemic period, we see an increase in active shootings by 96 percent and last year 61 across 30 states so this is not just concentrated in one part of the country this is really diffuse and did the report mention uh any of the causes for why those numbers I, are up? again I, I don't want to speculate i would like to look a little bit further because that was my question like what is the common thread here if there is a common thread Kathy, let me bring you in on this question. I mean, uh, as Catherine is mentioning, this happens in a larger context, the numbers of these active shooters increasing. Um, what does your expertise tell you about, as Catherine mentioned, this is happening all across the country. Um, what, what does your expertise tell you about the, the root causes or what, for those of us who are looking for wisdom in this moment of tragedy, um, where we could find that in those numbers of active shooters uh, that have gone up? Well, I don't have a psychological background or degree, um, but I think there's probably a lot of factors that um, add into this. You know, a lot of these kids for the last two years, their school, their schooling systems, the way they went to school was changed and disrupted. Their friend patterns and their ability to communicate and connect with their friends was changed. I'm not saying that makes it right in any way, shape, or form. I'm just saying what a lot of kids have gone through has made a lot of difference to their psyche, to their personalities. Also, they have grown up with social media where, you know, when I was in middle school, I didn't stay on a phone all day long. I wasn't posting selfies. Uh, we had different ways of... Um, growing emotionally that these kids don't have today or a different way of growing emotionally. So I think there's a lot of factors that play into what we're seeing happening. Our Janet Chamlin, who's based in Texas, is, is with us now. She's joining us on the phone because she's on her way to Uvalde, Texas. Janet, tell us what, what you can about this community. Hi, John. It, it's a small town. The next closest town is San Antonio um, of any considerable size. I believe it's about 15,000 people. Um, is, um, an open space, if you will. I do know that there is a uh, Customs and Border Patrol checkpoint um, near that community. Apparently it's only about three miles from the elementary school and the, um, the uh, roads through Uvalde and through Uvalde County uh, are regularly patrolled by Customs and Border Patrol because it's sometimes considered